the gift givers, the Lord is with us. Cliff, steeped in the Christian tradition, loved Christmas. But if one asked him which year stood out among many, he would recall the year that Christmas was bleak. His dad's company had gone on strike. Times were hard. The usual festivities in their household was missing. Presents under the tree were bare. He got a stocking with fruit in it. The gravity of their situation hit Little Cliff like a ton of bricks. But every year since then, he finds deep gratitude because no matter, no matter how bad things are, they're never, ever as bad as they were that Christmas. The existence of no gifts was the gift that taught Little Cliff how to appreciate everything. For Advent, we've looked at the beggars our first week. The second week, we looked at the prisoners. And last week, we looked at the dreamers. And today, we look at the gift givers. This is where we enter the story that Peter read today that tells us about the gift of Jesus. An angel appears to Mary sharing she has found favor. And because of finding favor, she gets to be Jesus' mama. I remember reading a feminist scholar commenting what was so great about being Jesus' mom. She was not married. She was young. Some might even say she wasn't ready. And she had no choice. It's not like they called her up and said, hey, would you like to or not? Sometimes gifts don't feel like gifts. Hard times don't feel like a gift. Bleak days do not feel like a gift. Responsibility does not feel like a good gift. Having to carry a baby doesn't feel like a gift. An unknown road, a situation, that's one side of the coin. But the other side of that coin is gratitude, opportunity, room to grow, a part in the Christian story, a blessed occasion of provision, in a less than ideal situation, born outdoors, Mary gives birth to hope. Go tell that on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. I call these gifts that continue to give. Jonathan loved plays and aspired to be a great actor. And so at his high school, his junior year, he auditioned for the lead male role. He knew the lines backward and forwards, and so did all of his siblings. And so on audition day, his brother showed up with no desire to act, auditioning for the same role as him. And guess who got the role? Jonathan's brother. Jonathan was so upset, you don't even want to be an actor. As the rehearsals went on, however, his brother was floundering. A little bit he felt good about it. But then Jonathan realized he had a new role, supporting his brother. He helped him understand how to get into character. Without knowing it, Jonathan gave a precious gift, showing up for another human being. His role was not to be the star because he already was a star. One of the greatest gifts we can give is ourselves. So there are gifts. No doubt, people will stand in lines to buy more stuff for other people, and then there is the gift. We can give gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. I want you guys to point to yourself and say, I am a gift. Now that was just practice. This time, <laughs> I want you to point at yourself and I want you to mean it. I am a gift. We not only can bring gifts from the stores, 
but we can bring gifts of ourself. We can bring the gift of ourself to support the situation and to support others, just as Mary became the lifeline for Jesus. So let us not forget today or tomorrow that we are what? We are a gift. And then there's the greatest gift. And that gift is, y'all sure about it? That gift is Jesus Christ, new life, new hope, to all he brings, listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Amen. <laughs>